Hello there. Geometrical figures, we're looking at quadrilaterals and other polygons, and we're just running through a few examples in which we find unknown angles in polygons. We'll be using a variety of geometrical rules uh, to help our thinking in these ones. Let's have a look. Just a few examples. This one, here we have a quadrilateral here, a four-sided figure. We know that the angle sum of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees, or if we don't, we can have a look at the angle sum videos that came before this. And so we can use that result to uh, just work backwards to find out what the value of x is, the angle that's missing there. We have three of the four angles in the quadrilateral, and we know that it adds up to 360 degrees. So if we take away each of the other angles from 360 degrees that we know about, we can take away the 100 and the 120 and the 80, and we'll see what's left, really, and the uh, that must be the value of x. So we'll work backwards. We take the angle sum and we take away the, the uh, all the angles that we know about, and we'll find the missing one by doing that, just on our calculator, probably. So that rule is using angle sum. This rule here, you'll see they've got your parallel lines here, and this uh, is cut by another side here. We could call that the transversal. And so built into this polygon um, is a parallel lines rule that you might remember. I have a previous video on my website about par parallel lines, so you can check that out. But uh, if we extend the lines of the polygon, the two parallel sides there, and we extend the other side, can you recognize that that's two sides, uh, two parallel lines uh, cut by what we call a transversal? This one uh, going through through the parallel lines here is called a transversal. And that uh, generates a, a special rule for the relationship that we have between those angles there. They're actually co-interior angles, you might remember. Um, and they add up to 180 degrees in this scenario, in this parallel line set up here. So if we know that rule, we take the A and we have 180 degrees, and if we take away the 65, we'll see what uh, we need to add to 65 to get 180 there. We'll work backwards and figure out that A must be 115 degrees. So we're using a, a geometrical, or a sort of a geometrical rule there about uh, parallel lines and a transversal as a part of figuring out a missing angle in a polygon. So I guess it's where um, polygons meet uh, parallel lines there. So that's the rule we're using there to find out the missing angle there, 115 degrees. Uh, this is a tricky one. This is a pentagon here. Now from a previous video or from your calculations uh, right now, we could uh, re recall that uh, a five-sided figure is called a pentagon, and a pentagon has an angle sum of 540 degrees, I'm here to tell you. And if you know that rule, or that uh, result, we can take away all the other angles that we know and find that missing M uh, angle there, a bit like when we took away the other three angles in our quadrilateral just before. So if we take 540 degrees and we take away each of the other angles that we know about, 120, 98, 94, and 110, if we calculate that we can figure out what uh, the size of the angle is that's missing there, 118 degrees in this case. So a very similar uh, method that we used in the first example on this video. Okay, here we have the markings on each of the sides, which indicate that this is a regular polygon. Remember, a regular polygon has the same size sides and the same size angles. So when that happens, we can figure out the angle size, the size of each interior angle, the value of P there, by working out uh, a method that we used in a previous video. A regular polygon, it's and it's called a heptagon, a uh, seven-sided figure. You don't see them all that often, but it's called a regular heptagon. Now it has seven sides, and so I'm here to tell you the angle sum is 900 degrees. And you can look at the previous videos on uh, angle sum if you wanted to double check that. But what we do to find that the value of P, to find the value of each interior angle, we'll divide by how many sides it's got. So the size of each angle, the angle sum, which in this case is 900 degrees, divided by the seven sides, we'll find uh, the angle size. Now it doesn't work out to be all eight, even if we did 900 divided by 7 on our calculator, we'll get 128.57 degrees, even if we rounded it off to two decimal places. But we're not always asked for even numbers, are we? Now, to figure out uh, Q from that, can you see that we have a point there, a vertex there. Now P, which we just found out to be 128 degrees, or a little bit larger than that, uh, P we know the angle of. Can you see that P and Q together make one full revolution around the point that is the vertex there? So um, we're going to use that fact, and we're going to take away the answer we got for 
P from 360 degrees to find uh, the rest of that. So that's 360 degrees because we're using that rule of one revolution around that vertex uh, of 360 degrees. So we'll take away that 128 and we'll get the value of Q, which is a real reflex angle here. The value of Q will be on your calculator 231 0.43 degrees if we rounded it off to two decimal places. So we're mixing together a whole bunch of rules there. The fact that regular polygons we can take the angle sum and divide by the number of angles or the number of sides and also we're using the rule that's one revolution it adds up to 360 degrees to find out the value of Q. So I'm just showing you in this video you can use a whole range of geometrical rules and results to work out missing sides and angles in polygons. And we'll catch you next time, peterblakemath.com.